GDScript is the obvious choice for scripting in Godot, right? Well, it's not really that simple. Stick around, because we're going to uncover the truth behind this whole debate, and the results may surprise you. But first, we really should address the elephant in the room. How you doing today, Ed? Well, Jolene brought fish for lunch again. Now the whole damn break room smells like an old dock worker's boot, and the stench is starting to creep its way into the office. That's how I'm fucking doing. Let's talk about some of the differences in these high-level languages. So C-sharp's been around for a really long time, whereas GDScript is relatively new. C-sharp can be a little harder to learn, and GDScript is typically pretty easy. C-sharp is a strongly typed language, which means you have to explicitly define the type of your variables, whereas GDScript doesn't require this. There are more tutorials available online for C-sharp, whereas there are fewer for GDScript. Not all of the C-sharp tutorials are related to game dev, but a lot of that information carries over. Lastly, C-sharp is used throughout the software development industry, whereas GDScript is really only used in Godot. Now that we have a basic understanding of the differences between these two languages, let's get right into some performance tests and see how they compare. The first workload we're going to look at is iteration. How quickly your code can iterate and modify a collection is very important. We'll be using shuffle and sort algorithms to test this. Let's look at some basic array shuffling. It looks like C Sharp is about 20 times faster than GD Script for this. It's worth noting though that GD Script has a shuffle function that will match the performance of C Sharp in this case, but it does so by moving the iteration to a lower level language, which is not a fair comparison. So, what about bubble sort? Everybody hates bubble sort. Looks like GDScript really hates bubble sort. It's worth noting that GDScript does have a built in function to sort an array, but it uses heap sort and not bubble sort. And it also sends the iteration to a lower level language, so it is a doubly unfair comparison. So clearly, C Sharp is the winner of the Iteration Olympics, but what about calculation? Is C Sharp still faster than GDScript when calculating values? We're going to test this with matrix multiplication. Now, matrix multiplication is an iterative workload, but a single calculation isn't going to make or break the performance of your program. It's when you iterate over calculations that really makes the big difference. Well, looks like GDScript's losing again, being almost 46 times slower than the C-sharp implementation of the same exact algorithm. Now you might be thinking, clearly C-sharp is better than GDScript in general, right? But wait till you see what happens next when we actually try to access the Godot API with C-sharp. Let's have a look at some basic scripting workloads. And we're going to do this by applying a transformation to a node. You're going to use this sort of workload more often than you use any other sort of workload in game dev. Let's have a look at how these two languages perform when every node is responsible for resizing itself. Well, we have a clear winner here as well in GDScript. This is the first time it's happened. And you might be wondering why GDScript outperforms C Sharp in this case. The answer to that question is marshalling. The performance cost of marshalling this logic is very expensive and it will translate into the performance of your application. But what if I told you we can double our FPS in C Sharp by simply writing our code to accommodate the marshalling costs? Let's take a look at what happens when we use a manager script to control our scaling rather than let the objects handle that themselves. GDScript still comes out ahead, but we've effectively doubled our FPS using the same logic in C-sharp. We're just doing it all with a single script. 
So which language should you use? It doesn't matter. It's more important that you understand the limitations of the language and write your code to accommodate them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.